Every season should be better than the last. It's time for some more Overwatch League. that they've chosen to bring a Viking on to the roster. The friend is here. He will be playing. And I know exactly. We get the reaction. There we go. People are hyped to watch this guy live here at the Overwatch League. It's a friend. It's a friend. The man. You might not know him if you only watched Overwatch League last year, but he's a prolific streamer, a big name in the competitive Overwatch scene before yep. Overwatch League. Decided to take a little step back, but now yeah, I think he's where he belongs. One of the most mechanically gifted players in all of Overwatch history, especially on Hitscan Heroes. His tracking is really up there. And he's known for pulling out, you know, a Torb here and there. He's got, a, got some cheeky plays up his sleeves. I'm just excited, exactly, because we are seeing, you know, coming into this, we were thinking a lot of 3-3, a lot of tank, a lot of right. heavy, high HP targets. But no, we are seeing some of those mechanically gifted heroes. We are seeing the Widows come into it. And so hoping that we're going to get to see Let's some welcome of these Welcome the Atlanta going. Rain. There he comes, leading the pack. structural support. Everything's taken care of. All, the mental health is a number one thing they're looking into. The players need to be happy and healthy before they can be dominant. Exactly right. We'll see how the confidence holds here going into it. The roster, though, a lot of smiles. They're all so hyped to be here. That can't be as a shock. That can't be a shock. This is at the pinnacle of this eSport. Overwatch League is what it's all about. And we are going to get the Atlanta Raid here. The starting six to kick things off. Make some changes. Uh, Tavik has been on brig duty lately. Atlanta Ryan mentioned to me that, yeah, they can play triple-triple. They much prefer to play DPS. So I think for the first time coming out on stage, maybe just let it loose a little bit. Give up a map stage if you have to, but let everybody play what they want to play. The chair you hear is because at the far top left of your screen, DeFran is picking one hero we have not seen in the Overwatch League. He's on the Torb, it's hammer time! This is it, it's happening! He's gonna be looking for some nails to hammer down. Let's see if we can find him. DeFran, <laughs> he's got a little grin going too. He knows what's up, he knows what's going on. What makes DeFran a really good Torb, to be honest, is that his primary fire is so good. Yes, you have a turret, yes, you have all this, but that primary weapon, very difficult to master, but puts out a ton of damage if you can actually connect with it. Exactly right, and it's got the two functions. You want to come close, turns into a shotgun, pretty much, and you're going to start melting tanks, so... Let's see if DeFran's going to find anything to kick things off. Masa's already found a kill on BQB, but Pokepo got traded immediately. Masa took down two tanks by himself, and that is going to be the opening point. Captured for the Atlanta Raid after some cleanup. Tanks coming in late there too, an interesting strategy. Probably got Florida a little off guard, but you know, DeFran and Torb go hand in hand, and now we've got a 29 heroes played in the Overwatch. That's truly the beauty of where the game is right now going into this season. The fact that we're seeing all of these heroes pick the variety of strategies, that's what it's all about. Not the same thing. They have to be careful, Molten Core's up. If they all group up, he can just drop all the lava on them. Exactly right, doesn't hesitate whatsoever. DeFran right now looking to do some damage. We did get a bomb going off. Swan is out of it, Trance thrown in here as well. And DeFran in the meantime will eliminate Zephyr. Still looking good here for Atlanta despite Florida's best efforts. Looking great here. The, the turret sometimes can just serve as a distraction because you have to deal with it. DeFran uses the ability to get in there. He's got Soundberry up on him, just looking for more targets, but he's out of people to eliminate. This is so much fun. Looking to lock it out. Desperation time as Florida will throw all abilities they have. No use trying to save them for the next round coming into it. They do have some stall potential here. As Swanabee can get back, will have Primal Rage buys enough time, but all the kills are going in favor of Atlanta right now. Tavik finally takes on DeBrand, gives him his first death of the round. Well, we'll see if DeBrand can do it. We mentioned Mechanically Gifted, and it's mostly his signature hero was Soldier 76, which relies a lot on tracking, as does Zarya. It might be able to translate. Self-destruct to initiate, straight into the back, easily dodged, however. Good work coming in here from Atlanta Rain. They decide to commit the transcendence to this fight, though. We'll get traded back by Tvik with the rally. Both support ults getting committed, and right now we're just hunting for a kill. Plenty of places to hide from that bomb, but Tvik 
to Vic, still goes boom! That is such a Daco Diva play. He has such creative self-destructs, usually just get a smack back or create space. A bonus kill there later. Daco yet to be eliminated this round, has 17 eliminations, nine final blows. What a Diva play. Yeah, the Assassin Diva, and this is going to be taking down. We do still have a few of the the uh, Florida Mayhem in position here. Hammond into it, the hamster looking to go and flatten somebody, but it's not gonna happen. And for now, they just need to keep tapping this point. They need to keep buying time. Florida Mayhem, Zephyr is here now on the point, but he's all by his lonesome. They're boosted up. He's not gonna be around for long. The overtime wick keeps burning down, but some good time bought here. And Florida Mayhem may be able to get back and just continue this fight one after another. They're just trickling in. Good focus fire coming in here from Atlanta Rain, and it is looking like they'll get a grip on things and take the advantage in this first map. <laughs> Hamster in the hole, goes down, not the way to die. They need to start getting some kills. Not gonna happen! Atlanta Rain make the grand debut onto the Overwatch League stage. There we go, man in question right there. And then Defran is going for the Sombra, so we'll get to see the hacks coming through here. Already infiltrating his way into the back line. The hamster gets silenced immediately, getting melted as well. Great focus fire coming through, and Defran gets the job done on his own. There to kick off the fight for Atlanta Rain. Florida Mayhem now. And it's a best of three on this map, so let's see. Atlanta Rain right now just perfectly content to sit and wait. Florida got off of their own Fara, which was one of their best options against the opposing Fara. So right now, Urster's going to be largely uncontested. So they might want to have to play indoors under a roof where justice can't rain from above. Bit of a frustrating position right now for uh, Florida. We already have the EMP online now for Depran. So he's going to move his way back to the point. And if Florida commit, they're all going to get silenced. So it's a touchy spot. Mercy there to keep the Ana alive for the rain, and so far it's just the tick, tip for tat, back and forth, EMP thrown in. Good dodge coming in from Florida, but they still get a kill, and without the hamster, they're not gonna be able to push this fight, Florida. It was Hearns away, gets great healing from his support, stays alive, and now one fight away from taking their first map. Looking fantastic so far, the rain. The friend gets caught out, however. But on Sombra, you can sprint your way back into the fight pretty quickly, so it shouldn't be the end of the world. Preemptive pop. Preemptive, that's the word, yeah. Preemptive Valk has popped. And he's tracking ultimates, and he knows that the MP is going to come online, so he wants to use it before he loses it. BQB, well regarded for his Sombra play as well, but he goes down after EMP, and it looks like Atlanta has the numbers to bring it back. Yeah, that's Vic doing the best he can here, but there isn't a whole lot that he can hope to do. Just trying to buy time and keep them active on this point. Soldier in play here on Hagopun, just trying to sprint his way back into this fight as quickly as possible. But again, Atlanta doing a great job of just focusing Florida down immediately as soon as they show themselves. And Atlanta will take the lead in this series. First map goes to them. That's exactly what's going to happen as we already have the friend nearly up to 90% on that grab. This is going to be so important here for the hold. Gator not quite on the Shatter. Those are the two big ults that we're trying to keep an eye on here uh, for Atlanta Rain. Uh, they're going to have a barrage as well. Trying to get a lot of damage, and the grab does come out on the low ground. Only grabs the Hammonds. Almost got away. He's so close, that doesn't matter at the end. Great control there from Gator to charge him down, not let him escape. Zephyr gets picked as well. And another solid hold here for the Atlanta Rain. And once again, now they have a couple of big ults on their side as well. Sound Barrier for Masa. Kodak has the trance. These two support ultimates gonna make all the difference. Okay, well, Chris just used his Valkyrie to stay alive. I don't think he's going to swap. I think they want to give this Pharah another go because they know the other team just swapped and won't have them up. We have been seeing that a lot from the Divas. It's looking like it's going to be one from Zephyr, though. Chucked into the back line. Not going to find it. Shatter thrown in by Gator. And there it is. The combo leads to two. Chris is gone. Swan as well. Two big kills here for Atlanta Rain to kick off the fight. And they're going to put a halt to the Florida advance immediately, looking to stagger this out as long as possible. Masa, well, he gets robbed. It's going to be BQB going down to Erster. Atlanta's got to be a little bit patient. They're really close to having some really important abilities online. Graviton, as you see DeFran trying to chunk away there too. And now it's just the, the dance of the triple-triple. There it is. Grab straight in to friend. Point blank looking for the follow-up. Trance has been thrown out from both of the Zenyatas, however, and we will have very few kills to follow up on the grab. BQB fully charged. He's got a grab of his own. Rally's thrown in. This is where it can get chaotic. This particular matchup between these two rosters now is just ults getting thrown in left and right. Looking for the follow-up. BQB point blank and the monster self-destruct. 
I don't know where Daco is. I think he might still be out of mech. I don't know if he re or not. No, he got in there. Okay. Now they're going to have a chance to get back in. Graviton at the ready. So close. Half a contested here. Yeah, great. Great play there from the friend. There's it is. Going in the grab. Not quite finding it. Gator does get the charge on Tavik. That support and, well, the control that comes with Vergita being backed out. And so Atlanta Rain coming out ahead in this fight by the looks of it. 40 seconds on the clock for Florida Mayhem to regroup. Last chance for Florida to take second point here. Great job from Defran there. He notices the positioning on Zephyr. Oh, you can't actually matrix this. I'm just going to go ahead and start it off with the graph and we'll see how it goes from there. This is it, the big push. Need to get a presence on that payload as quickly as possible. VQB, from his point of view, waiting for that grab, and he's gonna go ahead and hide it. Sucks Atlanta right into the mix. Do they manage to get the combo? Not this time. Shield is up from Gator, negating it. And now it just turns into a bit of a chaotic free-for-all here. Defran falls to BQB. But it's locked sound barrier to make and just hit Rally. And there's the bomb that might just seal it. The reinforcement distance going to be much easier for the Atlanta Reign. Florida back to the drawing board as they are stopped in the street space of Hollywood. In the chaos of triple triple brawl, sometimes you're just gonna have fully charged Zarius. Well, you can see the shift now, the dance. Florida may have, they're just trading places, although one of them, Swan gets knocked down to the low ground, but his team will quickly follow. They need to stick together here, but a lot of damage taken. On Florida Mayhem, Hagopun has got his trance up so quickly though, so this will make a difference when it comes to this fight. Trance gets committed in. Agapen trying to keep his team alive as they make their way forward. The friend should have his ult online any second now. That grab could turn it, and we'll see if he decides to commit it immediately or not. There it is, hiding it behind the car, trying to get some damage in on the follow-up. Swan eventually goes down, dies at the hands of Daco. And there it is, the cleanup for Atlanta Raid. The supports keeping their tank up, and now Atlanta going for more here. Defran has got the grab, looking for the angle. There's the shatter, though. Trance is out, however, trying to counter it. They are surviving for now, although I spoke too soon. Defran, the focus fire is there. They don't have to worry about the grab now. Florida may have decided to throw the sound barrier into this fight. The transcendence probably came in from Atlanta, hoping that we're going to keep Defran alive, or we're going to grab off the back of this. Tabik made sure that plan was off or not. Just got rid of him immediately. Well, OK, right here. Catch him out, Swan getting taken for a ride! No healing of that time! Perfect work, and this could be the opening here for Atlanta to start making some serious progress on this payload. You really don't want to lose your Reinhardt first in a mere matchup of triple-triple. And Defran trying to take the high ground, the slow elevator, as it were, mm -hmm. because Again, you put the Zarya on the high ground because who's going to shoot at her? There's no one who can do anything to her unless you want to rotate up there with your D.Va, maybe pressure it down, but it's a very popular position in strategy these days. Yeah, that would be it. Really costing them in the end forward, getting a little ahead of themselves. Let's see if they continue here as we already have Gator getting boosted in. Self-destruct used to initiate. This time it works out. BQB is gone, but Zephyr trades it right back. We lose Gator on the side of Atlanta. Sound bear, not quite there for Masa. And well, already Florida finding some kills. Up. Not quite, they do get backed out. The Fran and Dacro, the ones turning it around and things are looking grim now for Florida. Just like that, the blink of an eye, Atlanta turning it around. The brawl behind the jail has defined Hollywood these last several of days. The Fran is gonna come in on cleanup. Desperation time for Florida as they're just coming in. Last second, trying to throw bodies onto this cart. But one by one, they will fall to the right side of the kill feed. A grab onto BQB and it is all Atlanta rain. Havik is gonna do his best, but Brigitte's good. She's not 1v5 good. What a performance from Atlanta so far. 2-0 in. Blizzarina, we are back. We are live in California. We're staying out of the rain and we're watching Torbjorns on our main stage. Welcome to the halftime show. It's Bucket. We've got Zoe. We've got Monty. <laughs> the best mustache in the business is with us <laughs> right now. Monty, we got a lot of clips to go through, so let's jump right into it. Talk me through what you were thinking when you saw Defran take the stage. I, I mean, is there anything more appropriate than Defran playing Torbjorn to kick off his Overwatch League career? You absolutely love to see it. And, you know, this is a player that came in known for his mechanics, but without the maximum amount of experience at the professional level. But I think he really showed off here in this game. And so it wasn't just Defran. Comfortable running Torb. Let's take a look a little bit deeper here at Defran from our yeah. first game. 
Okay, so he rolled straight out of the gates with that Torf kick. And, and if it's any map you can do it on, it would be Elios on well. And this clearly shows that they have been practicing it. They knew exactly what they were running. They managed to get all the way to 99 to 0% on that very map with that Torf. Dafran only died one single time and then switched over to Zarya. So that was an overall fantastic performance. I like it a lot. Well, we saw a lot of Sombra play coming in. Dafran making those headshots connect. But when we look at the numbers here, Monty, let's dive deep. How did the Sombras compare when you look at Florida Mayhem versus the Toronto Defiant? I mean, I know I think Zoe has a lot to say about the Sombras. Actually, She's yeah. no, I, was, I got super excited there. <laughs> so basically what we saw throughout the whole thing was that Defran completely outplayed him on every single uh, account. We see the obvious ones with hero damages, but what we really wanted to look at is that he had an uptime on his ultimate being charged double the time of BQB. So he got his alt charge twice as fast and they had that EMP ready for every single team fight. I think it also says a lot too because BQB is coming in as a player that really knows how to play Sombra. That's how we were hyping him up coming into the match and he got pretty comprehensively outplayed. A little bit, you know, more similar though in terms of those Zarya statistics coming in. So at least BQB seems to have shed some of those nerves heading into that second map. But it's going to take a lot for Florida to win this one and honestly Atlanta looking super strong so far. Try to reset. Sombra's in the back line and one of the valuable things about Sombra is she's invisible and so she doesn't have to really commit to anything, and she can give her team a ton of scouting information. So let's make a bit out of the party there, as you saw, had to pack port back. We will have to sleep on the swamp, though, so that's gonna slow things down just a little bit here for Florida. He's back into it. Never mind. Zephyr with that nade. Hagopun and Zephyr stepping in, finding two big kills here on the defense. Erster wins the goal versus the BQB, however. Well, this should be just about over because those first two deaths were support heroes. Losing two tanks is bad, losing two DPS is bad, losing two support heroes when you only have two support heroes is the absolute worst. Yep, there it is. Perfect. Chucks himself in there. EMP gets thrown out immediately. However, trying to slow things down, get some control here for Atlanta. And Swan not really able to just go pouncing into the back line. Had to back off just a little bit. Now going to go ahead and put some pressure out, but immediately put to sleep. Slaps, now hacks. Tavik does get a kill though, and Swan awakens from his slumber angry. Hagopin's had a very good honor round, and they have woken up on this composition. And now Atlanta have to try and bide their time, wait for guys to rotate back in. Mines are out now for the hamster, but the kills keep rolling through here for Florida Mayhem. They're looking solid at this point. If they can keep them out, they only have half a tick to go here to pick up a very good time on the second point of Volskaya. And yep. the Primal helps so much. You just block him at the choke and knock him out. And Florida with a very quick time here. Stop BQB getting his presence, letting him know that he is here, but they are still moving together. Atlanta Reign as a group, solid work here as a unit. And now they're on the point, but Florida Mayhem not gonna let him get comfortable. Immediately trying to put the pressure on, but that ends up costing him. Chris gets blown up and that's the Lucio out of the fight immediately. Oh, that's gonna hurt, and now you lose your main tank, it is 4v6. Florida's going to need a miracle to pull it off. Unfortunately, they only get one kill from BQB. Atlanta walks on the point, will reign supreme. Ha <laughs> ha, gonna do that all season. There's two yeah. kinds of aim. There's flicking, really rapid movements that go from one place to another, and tracking, keeping your crosser on somebody for a long period of time. He's known as a tracking god. Zari is a tracking hero. It's definitely translating. Seeing it play out now as he is already on point. There's the EMP, however, so that's gonna slow things down. Swan finding the kill on Pokepo is pretty much gonna mean that Atlanta have to back off. Bit committed to this fight here for Florida Mayhem, although Zephyr's got the self-destruct coming online here for the next one. Florida might do be better served to be reactionary in this particular instance. Be reactionary with your Graviton, use it defensively if you must, use your support ultimates defensively. Yes, you don't need to win this fight really strong. You would like to hold on to these ultimates. Getting one or two kills without ultimates almost wins you the defense on these points. Exactly right. There it is. Already the chance. And this is just ult Jesta. Ult everywhere. A bit chaotic, but already we're seeing them wear down. Florida Mayhem doing a great job holding so far. Good stagger there on the sound barrier coming out from Chris, keeping his team alive, but the grab gets thrown in. Three quick kills here for Atlanta Raid taking advantage and they will finally make some progress. Able to section off a part of that team and then swinging the hammer, fire strike comes in, a ton of damage from the Reiner. Now it's all about playing the delay game. They get a little bit of body on the point. Nice holding of the angles here. They might just try to use displacement and that's it. Atlanta will also complete Volskaya for our first round. Tied up two to two on this map. 
We'll see. First blood drawn as Zephyr able to de-mech Erster on the D.Va. Yeah, solid work. The friend also getting charged up quite a bit, so he's going to start melting you. Forced to pack, however, by BQB. Giving ground, and this is really just the dance, but the grab gets thrown in immediately. BQB is out of the fight. The trance is in, and we will get the punish here. It's looking like Swan, will he die? Yes, he does. Goes down to Atlanta. And already it is turning around. Atlanta catching Florida out one after another. They fall off dominoes, and it is going to be Atlanta Rain picking up the first point. We'll see if it's going to pan out for him. Zephyr doesn't have the self-destruct either. BQB, however, has the grab coming online right now. So for this next push, he's going to be looking for Atlanta to group up so that they can get the punish. Pokepo just slotting into the corner. But now it's just about who's going to flinch, who's going to make the first mistake that's going to cost them in the end. The time and is now for Atlanta. They've waited patiently on this kind of slow middling push, and now they've got all the tools that they need, and the clock is running down. Now, grab gets thrown in, and there it is. Double grab, double, all oh, the self-destructs, but Atlanta will pick up the two kills, and Florida may have forced to retreat. Finally, some progress. One tick picked up for Atlanta. Going to be a second as well before Florida can get back into this fight, and the rally has been used, getting Atlanta even beefier. I love this recontest by Florida, though. They didn't just jump on one by one. They put their D.Va up top so that everyone could come in and start using some resources. Again, defense does not have to do a whole lot to stabilize here. One or two kills could mean an end to this map. And the Brad with that charge, he had more damage than BQB, and you can tell Swan getting pinned against the wall as well. It's not going to help him at all. Takes a dive, and it is going to be Atlanta Rain finding the kill and getting the second point. Four to two. The score... Four minutes 50 on the clock for Florida. Already some swaps coming in here on Florida's side as well. Just adjusting the strategy based on what they see. And it's looking like more of the same here from Florida. They're going to just rinse and repeat the initial strategy that they used the first time around on offense. This time, however, Erster is in the back line with the Sombra. So we'll see if he can find a target to get a hack on. He's wrapping back around to the point itself. And BQB is on a hunt. He's looking right now for Anna. He's looking for Lucer. He's trying to find a target. Nice, giving them all the information they need. They might want to try to dive in on this. A lot of pressure there, and here comes the Winston on the dive. Yeah, adjustments coming in from Atlanta, and it's already going to be him backing off. Chris finds the kill on him there, but then we're going to have the trade. One for one, and with Swan out of the fight, could make things interesting here for Florida Mayhem. Masa trying to stay alive, playing the angles, but Chris, again, Chris is just running him up right now. Pokebo's out of the fight now, thanks to this mad Lucio. And he's even looking for the other onto Anna, not gonna quite find it, but they've got real progress on the point now, Florida Mayhem. Nearly two ticks. Uh, they're trying to actually stall this out. I thought the Ana was just gonna reset there. They're bringing everybody back in to try to keep fighting. Masa's able to get back on the point. Here comes Pakbo, but this might be, end up being a mistake, but no guts, no glory, trying to pull back first point. Now they're staggering it out. To France, no back there alive. This and is taking way too long to capture. They are really drawing it out. Will he be able to touch in time? Yes, there's the contest. And once again, the follow up coming <laughs> in from Arista. And right. there it is. And the other side of things, we talked about how good Atlanta's tracking of ultimates is. They should know they're about to get EMP'd. We might see a, a spread here or Masa hiding away so he can shield everybody after they're EMP'd. Exactly right. He's about to get his sound barrier online here on that Lucio. BQB once again out in the open, trying to find multiples. He's going to be able to pick up one. Pokebo immediately eliminated, but the others on Atlanta have managed to dodge. There's the sound barrier getting thrown in, and they will hold for now. Primal's been thrown in here by Swan. He's getting melted. Got to be careful. Looking to try and get into this back line. Looking to, well, create some modern art. Not quite going to manage it for now, though. Florida doing a good job of keeping it together, however. But Atlanta now back up to full strength. These sound barriers are connecting on everybody. Each man hit a five barrier. Now we're into the big ultimates there. And DeFran chunks it away. Grab. He says, I'm a one-man wrecking crew. Grabs. Hits a giant shot into it. Everyone else contributed, but we like the people who show up with the kill feed. DeFran with a monster play. Look at his positioning right now, Masa. He's just all the way on the other side. BKB keeps coming in from the same angle. Masa just doesn't show himself at all. And there it is, gets it in, not gonna happen. Sound Barrier instantly there. Pokemon is dropping dangerously low and Hagopin will find the kill on him. Just the one, however, rally, everything getting thrown into the mix. It's chaos and Arthur finds two kills. Might... Zephyr and Swan are out of it, and it is not looking good for Florida. It might just be enough. There's a rally on both sides of things, and now oh. trying to get this going. However, reinforcements should be coming out here from Atlanta. They got the two early kills, just trying to 
touch a toe onto the point, keep progress at bay. And poco has got the shatter right now. He gets caught again, Hago, with the key kills. But Atlanta Rain now having a little bit of room to breathe with the shatter. Not oh, he does find Masa in the end, just clips him. And Florida Mayhem now with a tick of progress. Trance thrown out here by Dogman just to buy time, just to stay alive. The friend getting cut off of line of sight so he doesn't get any of the heals. And Florida Mayhem in overtime looking very good, looking like they're going to get the job done. Uh, they're still going to be able to try to stall this out. Remember what happened on first point. The stall went on forever. Not the case this time. Do you like Volskaya? Let's do some more Volskaya. Florida, though, not a whole lot of time to work with. Scouting Symmetra in effect again. Tavik goes back on Brigitte duty. This composition, they're going to add Swan in as the Winston. And Hagopin, he's had really high highs this game. He's played really well for Florida, trying to get them back into this series. Well, finding Urster is big. That means that we have, yeah, exactly. BQB gets to run him up in the back line here. And Lair having to back off. That's not where he wants to be. He wants to be dealing with damage. 25 seconds on the clock now for Florida Mayhem. Who are taking their time, and by now, Erster's worked his way back in, but he's so low on ult charge. They're just trying to take over space and deny people from taking multiple angles. They know it's really only going to be the one push there. Zephyr backing off to the high ground. BQB getting caught out. There's that Lair. Finds his angle, gets the job done. Advantage for Atlanta Raid now. With BQB out of the fight, Erster's gonna open it up with a kill on Swan. Hagopun caught alone, dropped to Fred. What a play, doesn't let him live. Pack control, really important when you're a Tracer. Take those packs away from people. Blink all over the place to Fran, trying to go God mode right now. Starts off, get some help from his friends. He's looking Still for alive. it. Looking for it, Chris. So low, not quite gonna hit the belly. There he does. Gets it in the end to Fran right now. Just running game. He's gonna have Pulse Bomb here in a second. Able to find Zephyr too. to Fran running wild. What a debut for him so far. Not over yet. He's been doing fantastic work, and it's gonna be good enough. Atlanta Raid. Glad that we were following the friend there at the end because what a monster just getting the job done. Moving through Atlanta Raid now, 50 seconds on the clock. Dogman with the angle, looking for the volley, not gonna find the targets, and it's going to be a full all-out combat brawl coming in for Florida Man. Looking for the fight straight in on Atlanta. Atlanta will weather the storm, however. Slow walk onto the point, taking their time, putting pressure, and you put the onus on the floor to play defense. You have to contest the point, otherwise they're just gonna walk away with it. Already, you got him in the back line right now, getting a bit out of hand. Yep, Chris and BQB got a little bit too big for their britches, pushed a bit too far, they will get punished. Swan now trying to do the best he can to stay alive, but the friend right now has got so much energy, and it doesn't even matter. This team capping it in the meantime in Atlanta Rain. Will win the series 3-0. We still have the fourth map coming up. But patience, patience is playing out, and now key olds come online for Atlanta Rain. So Florida Mayhem, they're a bit behind in this one now. Gonna if, have some work to do. If you're Dogman, you just don't want to die with your ultimate charge because yeah. if if you can keep your Lucio alive and your Brigida alive, then they should get there. Exactly. Chris not far away at all. Daco with a clever self-destruct right over the edge. Will not find any kills though. Hagopun with the trance, keeping his teams in it. And now Swan, he's like, right, there's a payload to push. Let's try and get just a little bit more out of it. Swan's dangerously low, getting pushed into the angle. We have the focus there on Swan, and he gets killed. No Reinhardt in the fight now for Florida Mayhem. Atlanta Rain offer. Everybody's still alive and kicking, and this is gonna be it. Florida, every foot counts. A beautiful sequence of support play right there. Order of operations down to the second. There's no way you're burning through all that health. They used the Rally first of all. Then they used Transcendence. When that was fading, they used Beat. How are you ever gonna do enough damage to chew through all that? Great play from the trio of supports, Milana. I just get to see the handiwork and already shots going out. BQB just looking for angles right now. Tavik's gonna be the one to kick things off and finds the kill on Defran. So no early progress being made here for Atlanta Rain. They're still kind of just soaking up some damage, getting there. That's the main thing though. With all of this poke, it's only gonna benefit Atlanta Rain's support heroes just because they're gonna get to farm up those ultimates a little bit faster. To all our fans who thought maybe we'd only see triple tank, triple support, I bring to you Bastion v Bastion on Route 66 yeah. in 2019. The pirate ship trying to go up against the reinforced, you know, fort up on the side of the hill. And right now it's looking like the pirate ship is about to set sail. Two kills, three. And while well, they're just wiping right through Atlanta Raid.
They found it. It's just a bit unfair because Bastion's main drawback is that he doesn't have mobility. Go against this fight with that additional armor. But now this is going to be the Ryan Mind Games. Who's going to drop their shield first? Who's going to open themselves up to the shatter? Well, Chuck's it out, but Poco's still here with the shield alive to make sure that his teammates will not die. Self-destruct, however, got a no come Dogman and Masa out of it. Will be enough for the rain. The friend with the grab. He knows where the D.Va is. He sees the Deep Matrix in play. It's about finding that opening right now. Who can he pick up? Just got stunned, got pummeled to the face. But this is it. Finish line in sight now for Atlanta Rain. And DeFran still trying to find the angle, trying to get clever. Yep, hides it. No warning, but doesn't catch anybody with that combo. Atlanta Rain not going to find any joy. Really nice play by Zephyr. Just his mere presence made DeFran end up tossing that one into the ground. Swan takes out his counterpart there. This might be all Florida needs to stabilize and hold on. But DeFran bringing it back himself. Takes on Hago. No support ults left here for Florida Mayhem. They've got Zephyr with the self-destruct. We have the grab as well thrown out by BQB, but the kills are still here. Atlanta Raid, it's going to be Pokemon finding BQB. DeFran there to melt them down. And Atlanta Raid looking like they're going to keep it together. So close to the finish line. Zephyr not going to be able to stall it out. We will have a last second touch, but it's not going to be enough. And the Atlanta Raid. 4-0. You could not ask for any more if you're a fan of this new expansion franchise from the South. You saw your man, DeFran, go absolutely nuts. The rest of the team, we can talk, we can talk about enough as well. Overwatch, definitely a team game. That was the star we wanted to see come in, and that's what 0-4 looks like. Right there, not pleased on Florida's side, gonna be the handshakes here. So far, Atlanta Rain will succeed on their first day here. We have Mika on the floor with an interview. Thanks, thanks guys. I got Jafran here on the floor. Everybody has been chanting his name. We saw him pop off on Torb early, which is a great way to start off the season. You guys went 4-0, which is an even better way to start off the season. This is your first time on the Overwatch League stage, so this is a huge moment. Do you have anything you wanna to say to your fans? With the help of Twitch Prime, I immediately managed to pop off. Well, that's all we have here, so back to you guys. Well, there we go. Everybody's just, you know, too, too hype in the arena. I didn't actually hear what he said, Rex. I'm disappointed. That's all there right. we go, DeFran. Everybody's hyping it up, so there we go. I, I, the DeFran story is so fascinating. And if you're, if you're new to it, like, just go back and like, look at it. I'll try to give you like a brief explanation of it. Came onto the scene, dominant. Came up from flipping burgers. He's got an account called Burger Flipper. Like this guy is the ultimate example of Path to Pro. Good on the ladder, picked up by team. Took some time off, streaming monster, making all that Twitch money. And uh, then he comes up and just dominates on his debut in the Overwatch League. Are you kidding me? With unorthodox, unorthodox signature heroes as Play well. Of the match presented by Omen by HP. Who could it be? It's the Brown! Uh, the Torb just melted him. I, I honestly used to watch him stream Torb and be like, how do you hit those shots? How does that gun even work? You sniped a Widow from across the map, you <laughs> man. What are you up to? But he played everything today. I think there were some questions about what his hero pool was going to be. Was he going to fit into a team structure in the Overwatch League? Could he play in this 3-3? We all knew his Torb was going to be dominant. Best Torb of the league, by or not. But his Zarya good, his Tracer, his track, I mean, it's just, you can't say enough about how well he played. And to be able to bring his signature heroes, play them well, and then play the Zarya well, I think that it's a bright future. Certainly is for Atlanta Reign as a whole right now. Couldn't have been a better start. And DeFran really proving true to all the hype. So congratulations to him and congratulations to the team. Florida Mayhem have some work ahead of them.